Yeah, I have a filter on. <laughs> because I have no makeup. I have no makeup. I have <clears throat> um, chapstick, tinted chapstick, and um, this like um, SPF powder that I can put on my face, but that's it. I don't have any color. I don't have any crayon. I don't have any eyebrow. I have no eyebrows. Look at me. Uh, it is, I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> it is a quarter to seven, I think, on Tuesday. And um, I'm supposed to be getting out of isolation today. Today is the 17th of May. And I was in isolation technically for 10 days. Um, so technically I'm supposed to be able to leave my room today. Hey Trish, um, I am hopeful that I can leave my room today. <laughs> um, I just said to the nurse, I was just like, so I can walk outside, right? She's like, no, you have to wait for the infectious disease control guy. Great. Um, I have not left these four walls. Um, in eight days that's one side of the room <laughs> that's my window and that's it <laughs> hey tim how are you um so i'm hoping that i can at least walk the halls today i am supposed to be transferred to a cardiac unit in either manhasset or new hyde park i don't know where they're going to be taking me um because um in case you haven't been following my little journey over here my heart took a shit <laughs> um, and I just wanted to actually clear up a couple of things because there were some people who, hey, thank you, Trish. I really appreciate it. Hey, Jill, how are you? Um, I wanted to clear up a couple of things because there were a few people that contacted me that were very, um, I don't want to say accusatory. It could have been taken that way. Um, but they were like, how come you got so sick? How come didn't you get vaxxed? You know, and listen, hey, Sherry. Hey, Robbie. Um, I, yes, I did get vaxxed. I got vaxxed a year ago. Um, and uh, I, I did all the responsible things. I live and work in New York City. I literally had to get vaxxed in order to be at work. I was not allowed to not wear a mask at uh, work for a certain amount of time and then on the train for a certain amount of time. Um, or at least, and it's still, the, the mask mandate is still on the train. I did all the things. I didn't sneak into any, uh, you know, revenues. I didn't. Um, I didn't shirk any of the responsibility that it takes to be a New Yorker during COVID, okay? I, I got dealt a shitty hand. And um, basically what happened was I contracted COVID and I got a really bad case of COVID um, on April 22nd. I home tested on April 22nd. When you home test, the city does not take that, or the government does not take that into consideration. So I had no idea that I was going to get as sick as I did. If I had known, I would have, you know, gone and gotten a laboratory test so that I could be official. Um, it's neither here nor there. It doesn't matter. I am I'm done doing that whole shit of what it could have thing. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that I ended up in the ER on May 7th, the first time. Um, and then they tested me. They tested positive. They gave me steroids. They gave me pain medication because... The COVID, which we did not know at the time, was manifesting in my myocardium and it was causing a lot of chest pain. And because my blood pressure was somewhat normal at that time, uh, it, was, it was high, but they were like, oh, it's COVID, she's in pain. When you're in pain, your blood pressure goes up, you know? Um, they gave me some pain meds, my blood pressure came down. They gave me some steroids. Again, I got a little bit better. And then they let me go on the 7th. I went to work on the 8th worked a full day. In fact, there's a picture of me on the 7th, uh, just a couple hours after leaving the ER for the first time. It's a picture of me at Cheesecake Factory. Little did I know, I was kind of in heart failure. And now when I look at that picture, I'm just like, oh shit, I could see it in my face. It's like there was something wrong, you know? Anyway, ER on the 7th, meds, they sent me home. Went to Cheesecake Factory, celebrated Mother's Day a day early. Then on Mother's Day, I worked all day, Five clients, boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four, boom. <laughs> uh, 
um, masked up. You know, I, I did all the precautions and stuff. I don't believe that I gave anybody COVID, Kate. Um, plus, I, at that time, I was actually already past the isolation time. I was not contracting COVID. I'm not transmitting COVID at that time. And then on the 9th, poo-poo's hit the fan again, okay? Monday the 9th was really, really bad. Um, I knew something was wrong. I absolutely knew something was wrong. I could not breathe. I would be outside in the fresh air, in the wind, and it's just like, <gasps> I literally, I couldn't breathe all day long. My son was looking at me like, mom, there's something wrong with you. 2.30 that morning from the 9th, 9th into the 10th, I made the decision that I was gonna to go to the ER and I've been here ever since. So anyway, as you can see, I do feel a lot better. I actually don't feel sick whatsoever. I feel a little raspy just because I've been literally inside for eight days. I have had no fresh air, no vitamin D, no sun on my face. The witch is dying inside, <laughs> okay? I need to be outside, but it'll happen. I'm gonna, good morning, sunshine. I'm gonna go back and, and read some comments now, okay. Um, Lise, hi mom, how are you? Um, doo -doo -doo. It keeps on skipping. Damn, just woke up. I haven't really slept. I'm not sleeping. Hey, Betty. Okay, hold on. I, I can't, it keeps on skipping. So happy to hear the sunshine. You're right, you can still get COVID even if you're up to date with shots. Yeah, no, the, the vaccination does not stop you from getting COVID. That was the other thing. I just want to talk a little bit about this. I'm not trying to be up on a pedestal and I'm not trying to um, proselytize or teach, really. The vaccine does not stop you from getting COVID. The vaccine stops you from dying from COVID. I had the vaccine a year ago. I might be dead. I could very well be dead. If I hadn't gotten to the ER on the morning of May 10th, I might be dead. Honestly, it's like a 50-50. And that's really scary. And I know my mother doesn't want to hear that. And I know my husband doesn't want to hear that. And I don't really want to hear that because I have two children and it scared the shit out of me, okay? Never have I come that close to my mortality. And I wasn't even that close, okay? But for a lot of people, they never get as close as I did. I promise I'm not going to turn into an evangelical Christian and I'm going to be like all, you know, all over the social medias and, you know, you have to change and blah, 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 blah. No. Um, but fact of the matter is, is that I, um, I got a really big wake up call and it's not, and this is another thing that I wanted to say. This was not my fault. Okay. Um, yes, I have a few comorbidities that I should have been actively monitoring and caring for, okay? I'm about 50 to 75 pounds overweight. That's a fact. That's a lot of people. Literally, I can't go into Target and find my spot, uh, find my spot, find my size because everybody's my size, okay? Um, I have genetic factors that cause me to have slightly elevated blood pressure. I've had slightly elevated blood pressure for about five years, 10 years, something like that. Was I taking care of that? No. But my doctor, and I'm not blaming my doctor, but my doctor never said to me, you know what, you need an angiocath, you need an echocardiogram, you need a stress test, blah, blah, blah. I was going to the doctor three times a year, more so than other people. But he was like, oh, this is manageable, this is okay. Your high blood pressure could totally be like linked to your anxiety, because I totally have an anxiety issue. <laughs> and I'm a little overstressed, and I like to overstructurize my life. And that gives me extra anxiety too. So, you know, I had some comorbidities in there that really needed to be addressed. And now they will be. And if those comorbidities hadn't been there, this might have still happened. In fact, chances are it would have still happened. I probably will never know 100% if this was 100% because of COVID. But today or tomorrow, I'm being transferred to a cardiac center where they're gonna be doing an angiocath, which is basically a catheter, which is basically a tube, okay, with a camera on it. They're going to either filter it through my armpit or my leg, I'm not sure, and then they actually go into my heart. And they're going to find, hopefully, if there's any manual repair that they need to do, and hopefully the source of that malfunction, okay? They will hopefully be able to tell me if it was COVID or not, although I don't know if I, w I, don't know if I care because every infectious disease control guy that has come in here is just like, yeah, it's COVID myocarditis. Like, 
that's it. Because they also don't want me to sit here and be beating myself up at 49 years old, ending up with heart failure in the hospital. There's no reason for that. They see that I am like, okay, let me out of here. Let me do this thing. I'm going to like turn this thing around. And when I say I'm going to turn this thing around, it's not because I'm feeling guilt that I wasn't doing it before. It's that I need to now step up my game. I now need to be that uber healthy, annoying fucking person that you don't want to deal with. I kind of need to be that way. I'll try not to be. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to internalize it and then maybe just get on my brothers about the smoking thing. By the way, all of you that are smokers, do you know how fabulous it is when the doctors come in and look at you and say, do you smoke? And I go, fuck no. Huh. Think about that. The next time you want to light up a cigarette, I probably would be dead if I was smoking. One of them actually said that to me. One of them said to me, you might be dead if you had been a smoker. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. I've never been, um, for the past 15 years, whatever it is, I, I don't inhale well. I've, I've tried. I've tried to, you know, have the occasional social cigarette, whatever it is, and smoke whatever. Um, my lungs can't handle it. Thank God my lungs can't handle it. So now my lungs are really never going to handle it. I am never going to be able to smoke anything ever again. And that's fine. I have no problems with that. Um, but yeah, I'm in here because of COVID, but I don't want people to be afraid of the vax. I don't want people to be afraid of the booster. I don't want people to think that the vax did this to me. The vax did not do this to me. COVID caused me to develop myocarditis. Okay, okay. So anyway, I am sitting here and I'm waiting for the infectious disease control guide to come and uh, lift my restrictions so that I can at least walk in the hall. I was thinking about maybe going down to the gift shop. I don't know if they'll let me go down to the gift shop and buy some makeup. <laughs> Although I can just live in this filter. I can live on Facebook. Okay. Anyway, good morning, Douglas. Hey, Jolene. Um, keeps it. Joanne, Debbie. Okay. I'm going to say hi, but I'm going to kind of acknowledge comments later. There's a lot of people here. Francis. Silver lining. You will get definitive answers for any heart issues. Exactly. Colleen, time for Jeffrey. Okay, so as far as Optavia goes, I do plan on buying some supplements. I don't plan on doing the five in one program right now. I'm a little, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in diving into a, um, an MLM like that again. I, I appreciate um, the fact that people are still watching my manifest videos from seven years ago, which is amazing. I still make money off of those videos, which is amazing. And I don't feel like I don't deserve it because I worked really hard on the five and one. I lost 75 pounds in 2014, 2015. Um, there's something to be said for the product. I'm not into, um, developing that lifestyle right now. And that's not to say if there's anything against that. It's working beautifully for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, the, the Jeffrey cup is coming out. I have to, I have to go to Long Island game farm and get a new cup actually. Um, but yeah, shakes, bars, supplements, regular eating. You know what? I also, I haven't had cheese in eight days. When was the last time you could say that? I haven't had alcohol in eight days. When was the last time you could say that? I can't tell you the last time I could say that. Anyway. Um, actually alcohol, I think is seven days. So glad you're doing better. Best of luck. Next steps. Take care of you. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to wrap it up because, um, I, I really want breakfast. So now that I've, I've been into this, um, room, this, it, this thing, where's my bed? Hospital bed. Me. Um, I'm in such a routine with the meals because it's the only, um, source of outside entertainment so the, every day they bring me at um in between seven and eight uh, in between seven thirty and eight fifteen and then around noon and then around five they bring me a tray of food and it's not a ton of food but that's a good thing and i don't know if you know i lost probably five seven pounds just sitting here they're giving me so much uh medication to take all the fluid off my lungs there was so much fluid on my chest oh my god it was like I, every day I could feel it like lifting and the pounds were just coming off. It's crazy. Um, so the food comes and it's all these compartmentalized little things. And so I sit and I'm like, 
And I'm like evaluating, I'm gonna eat that first, and then I'm gonna eat that, and then I'm gonna save that for 10 o'clock, and then I'm gonna squirt some lemon juice on that fruit, and it'll be preserved in my dark little drawer over there so that I can eat it at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> that's, that's my activity, and I have my iPad, it has been a saving grace for me. Oh my God, my iPad. I have not turned on the TV. Where is it? And I have not used the telephone because I actually actually don't know how much this is all gonna cost me. I don't have the best health insurance in the world. I do have health insurance. Um, <clears throat> this is not a plea <laughs> and I'm not gonna start a GoFundMe, but I'm probably gonna end up paying 20% of this whole kit and caboodle unless I can start up some paperwork that is like COVID survivor related, which I will do. I'm a Virgo, so I'm gonna have to go do that. Technically, if you suffer from COVID and you're hospitalized and it costs you anything, sorry, um, there are foundations and programs and AIDS, A-I-D-E-S, um, that you can apply for. So I will be doing all of that because this is COVID related and um, you know, up until now, I felt like all of those programs and those subsidiaries and stuff were for other people, but now it's for me because I have no idea how much this is going to cost. At 20% plus the copays, I mean, I'm probably talking in between 10 and 15 grand. All of a sudden, just like that, boom. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> but maybe I'll save money on alcohol, so I won't be buying alcohol anymore. Anyway, I hope everybody has a great day. If you have any questions, just pop them into the um, comments below. So happy the other Kathy is getting better. I look good, yeah, it's a filter. I'm using a filter. I'm 100% owning the fact that I'm using a filter right now. I'm probably gonna download this video and pop it over onto YouTube and Instagram because I've got some people over there too. And um, I hope everybody has a fantastic day. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. I'm here with nothing to do.